Baba, Manto Vetabelate. This is everybody's day. This is everybody's day. Whosoever. If our faith does not sound rational, the coming generation will walk away. So you see, that's why we will all return to doctrine, whatever we have found. We'll go back to the word of God and line upon line, precept upon precept, explain to people the substance of our faith. If not, people will walk away. Are you with me? The Bible is not just mystical. It was an intelligent compilation. If you do a study of the epistles, there is a word that features so much in the epistles. It's the word for. F-O-R. And Paul employed that word to explain, I mean to expound upon what he said. So he says one thing, and then he says for. That means the reason why that thing is that way is because of this one. And there are even writings where for five verses is using four. That is A. A is A for B happened. For C happened. For D happened. Because our faith is rational. When you look at the book of Romans, you see the mathematics of our redemption. So we just judge that if one died, all died. It means one is equal to all. It was by the sin of one man that death reigned over all. And then by the righteousness of another one. So if one is equal to all, one is also equal to all. That's the mathematics of our redemption. To appeal to cerebral people that it is true. Are you with me? Why do people have the life? Remember the subject is tending the life. And the burden is that this life is designed to express in multi fashion. Sometimes it's administered as an impartation. Sometimes it's administered as a flame. Sometimes it comes as the, the release of some dimension of grace. Is somebody with me? Sometimes the life, even in my own little mysterious expression, comes as a garment. This morning, Jesus promised us that there was going to be a, a whole congregational reality of the oil of preservation. And because my body was tired, I didn't want to lay out on anybody. Say, everybody, you lay your hands on your head a little. You just put your right hand on your head. Let Jesus pass through your hands. There's nothing mystical about what we do in laying hands. And then I prayed a simple prayer. And I was going to continue my prayer. And Victoria Orenzi's song, the AIR song, started playing in my spirit. And so I began to hum that song gradually. And the hand of the Lord began to rest on people. Began to rest on people. The Lord now said, eh, but I have seven particular people. And I want you to give them that gift. I've said you can always give. There's only one gift. Jesus said, anytime you get into a meeting and you sense a need, just ask me to give it. I will allow you. And it's that he will give a garment of his presence. It is a garment that makes you aware in very tangible terms that God is with you. Me, I don't have a cerebral, I don't just have a cerebral knowledge of God is with me. I can feel him. It's, it's, a, it's a, pray, a weight of the presence that is interactable. So, Jesus said there were only eight. And so we pleaded with him that, let him use the giving of that eight as a sign to prove that everybody has received. And until the eight person, until the last person is gifted that oil of preservation, let the eight person not wear the garment. So he did that. When we got to the eight person, my next feedback from the spirit was that some people were not gifted that garment with a tangible touch started asking. And so the Lord will show me where the people who just asked him are. So somebody just asked him. Boom. The person goes. Another one asked him. Okay. Oh, three guys just asked him. And then the three go off. And there's another one there. 
Victor, I know Victor will query me this night because I was laughing through the process. It was not. So, uh, so two other people just asked them and the government comes and they go off like that. The life can be a garment. Is somebody with me? Why do people wear those garments for two days and then begin to look for it? Because you can go to a fire conference and they put a flame on you. Maybe it's, there's something we call, they call prayer fire. Abi? Abi now? If it comes on you, you can't pray gently again, you pray violently. Why is it that the prayer doesn't last for 72 hours? That you go back to sleep and then you are trusting God to see another flyer that has fire on it. It's because the life was designed to be tended. And if you go across scriptures, you see scattered prescriptions to give free course of expression to that flame instructions in spiritual engagement instructions in consecrated existence like i brought to us during the conference to ensure that what is received is sustained in potency as a means of expressing gratitude to the giver isaac if you give me a shoe and you come to visit us in the house and you behold your shoe muddied on the floor outside how will you feel he said you will feel bad oh i thought you said mad okay he said you will feel bad the bad feeling will be this guy knows i'll be value because sometimes expensive shoes don't look fine in the truth is the very fine ones are the cheap ones so somebody walks into the building with crocodile skin shoe the shoe is ash and black. And then you're wondering, are you, are you fine? And then you find out that if 50 of you want to pay school fees, you will still not buy the shoe. How we treat what God gives to us is our greatest show of gratitude to Him. Because the givings of God are not free they were made free they are all blood bought everything God gives came by blood the blood of the Christ and so you disdain the blood you make light of the sacrifice of heaven when you stay out of tending if you got a flame yesterday one of the ways to blow on the flame is to build a prayer routine I've taught us before Every time you receive something tangible from God, according to the Old Testament patriarchs, what they do is to build an altar around that thing. During the last conference, God put a flame in my spirit. You will look for a period in your 24 hours as by the spirit and you will build an altar to maintain it. It can be an altar of worship. That for 15 minutes every day, I'll be worshiping to the God who put a flame on my head. That's the way of the patriarchs. We can, we can trace the, the path that the patriarchs walked through and their ways are littered by the altars of their encounters. When we find out that there's no active altar in your life, it means that you are a waste of the things that God gives. The design is to tend for sustainability. Build Bible study around what you received. They said, take fire, and fire came upon you. Go and research in scriptures what the fire is supposed to do. How the fire is supposed to be preserved. Look for a song that advertises God in the fashion of the giver of what you received. That's how we survive. Go online, download a song that says that God is that thing or, or, or that personality that gives you that thing. That's what gives sustenance. Find out the consecrations of those who came before you in scriptures and in modern day expression, men who permanently carry that thing 
and according to scriptures be a follower of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God that's how to tend to what God gave you the destiny of every flame is to win think about that now Eru that's the way they say it in Yoruba they say Eru no man it means no matter how big the log is, if he chooses to continue to burn, uh, no, this they say they say in Oku, Oferu Boju. The destiny of every burning log is ashes, and like I found out in in the university one time, that if you pass through fire gives us smoke, right? When you pass through a place where you see ashes, stamp it. What would you do? Ash also has a look-alike smoke. Fire self releases smoke. Ash requires effort. Poo, 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 poo. And then the thing is up. And then we think, oh. Every time you see ashes, let it be a reminder to you that fire once passed through here. And what is left of some people's encounters with God is a heap of ash because they do not know that it needs to be tended. Uh, the fire on the altar, Pastor Diola, was not lit by a priest. It was God who dropped the flames of the altar. But according to scriptures, it is the responsibility of the priest to tend it. He must come in the morning and put wood and come in the evening and put wood. It's a picture to the flame that God puts on you that at least there are two time frames in a day in which you must supply wood. If not, the fire will go out. So the Lord began to speak to me from Revelation chapter 3 and I think the reading is from verse 7 don't worry I'll start my I'll start my manipulation teaching so I know that's what I'm waiting for we don't even know what I want to teach there anyway so but I'll start it this night and I'll continue later it was a letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia based on my study there are two churches that did not suffer negative rebukes. I don't have all the time to read because I want to enter my main teaching for the night. But you will find commendations and commendations. Let's go on till the 11th verse. Let's give me from 10. You'll find commendations upon commendations. You will find promises of rewards upon promises of rewards so that in the 10th verse, the Lord said to the church, Because thou hast kept my word of patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of tribulation. You see, one of the grounds upon which this church escaped condemnation from the Lord was, was that it was a church under no kind of pressure. Verse 10 was a revelation that there was impending temptation. But because in the seasons of ease, they did not become lascivious, Jesus came with a promise that even in the seasons of their contention, he will keep them from the reality of that hour, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell in the earth. It means the church in Philadelphia will not be able to bear witness to destruction or compromise even when trying times come upon the world. Why? They have kept the word of his patience. That's 11 is what I need. A warning. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. That no man take thy crown. It was a revelation that churches are apportioned reality. Realities that are given by God, but realities that can sleep if they are not held fast. Can I have a more contemporary translation? 
Any other translation? I am coming quickly. Hold on to what you have. That no one takes your crown. So I decided to research the reality of crowns. Because Jesus was not advertising royalty. The frame of reference of that last warning was in an Olympic bowl where after a lot of competition, the one who prevails has a writ of victory. Like Jesus wore a crown of thorns. There is a writ of flowers that is woven that is using an ancient Greek expression as the, like the trophy of the victor. Are you with me? Like Arsenal and Man City and, and Liverpool are trying to contend for a cup. I mean, all the others are outsiders. This they know. In the same way, understand that on the track that you have been apportioned. So it's not about somebody stealing your throne. Is that there is a victor's crown that God has apportioned for you. 